Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief Headlines Edition, all the daily AI news you need in around five minutes. Sometimes advancements in Gen AI hit you over the head. More often, though, every week sees some small but significant change that would be easy to miss if you weren't really paying attention. An example of that comes this week from Google. AI researchers have discovered a novel feature of Google's Gemini, which is the ability to see two things at once. Until now, multimodal LLMs have been only able to accept one visual input at a time. For example, either looking at a picture or watching a video. Researchers developing an experimental application called AnyChat have discovered that Gemini can do both at the same time. Asan Kalik, machine learning lead at Gradio and the creator of AnyChat, said even Gemini's paid service can't do this yet. You can now have a real conversation with AI while it processes both your live video feed and any images you want to share. The previously unavailable feature could be a result of Gemini's unique architecture. Unlike OpenAI's GPT-4.0, Gemini was trained to be natively multimodal, rather than having additional input modes added later. In terms of the new and improved use cases that this opens up, on the low stakes end, VentureBeat noted that students could share a video of a problem along with a picture of a textbook, or artists could share a live stream of a work in progress along with reference pictures. For higher stakes usage, they wrote, imagine a medical professional showing an AI both live patient symptoms and historical diagnostic scans at the same time. Engineers could compare real-time equipment performance against technical schematics receiving instant feedback. Quality control teams could match production line output against reference standards with unprecedented accuracy and efficiency. Now, the release of this feature through a third-party tool begs the question of whether Google were aware of Gemini's capacity to perform in this way. It's totally possible that they decided to keep the feature locked away due to the high resource usage associated with this type of processing. Then again, it might also be a sign that small teams of curious devs continue to discover things that the large research labs overlook, even about the emergent features of their own models. The one thing that did come directly from Google is that the company has announced that they're making AI in both Gmail and Google Docs free. This is definitely part and parcel of the AI race and the war for premium users. It used to be that if you wanted to use Google AI features inside Gmail, Docs, Sheets, Meet, basically the workspace suite, it was going to cost you $20 per month. Basically, if you're already paying for workspace, all of that's going to be bundled for free. At the same time, however, the base level price of all workspace plans is increasing. Basically, companies are going to now have to pay about $2 more per month per user for workspace, but all the AI stuff will come natively. Now, I think this is a pretty interesting play. One of the gripes that I've frequently heard from our enterprise partners at Super is the grumbling about how much more it costs to buy Copilot and AI subscriptions on top of existing Microsoft service. Now, of course, price is a fast-moving target, and AI has real costs, but this is definitely a big move and one that could force other companies' hands. Staying in big tech, but moving over to Meta for a moment, internal messages have revealed that Meta executives were extraordinarily focused on beating OpenAI. These internal discussions have been unsealed as part of the Sarah Silverman-led lawsuit against Meta. They suggest, not surprisingly, that the company had their sights firmly on GPT-4 as their major competition. In an October 2023 message, Meta's VP of Generative AI, Ahmad Aldale, said, Honestly, our goal needs to be GPT-4. We have 64,000 GPUs coming. We need to learn how to build Frontier and win this race. And interestingly, although Meta was competing in the open source field, they didn't seem too worried about rival open source labs. For example, in one message, Aldale said, Mistral is peanuts for us. We should be able to do better. It was clear even as we were watching that in between Llama 2 and Llama 3, Zuckerberg and Meta shifted their attention from being the best open source model to being a world-class, state-of-the-art model in general. Now, a lot of the framing of this article is all about how obsessed they were and uses a lot of words that suggest that pejoratively. But that sort of aggressive focus is the only way that companies, especially big companies, are ever going to be able to stay in a race against a startup like OpenAI. One person's obsession is another company's focus. Now, there's a whole other dimension to this battle around the use of the external LibGen dataset, which contains pirated versions of copyrighted works and was billed as the largest free library in history. LibGen has been sued multiple times and was ordered to shut down. Aldale discussed clearing the path to use the dataset by contacting publishers, but it's not clear that he obtained all the relevant clearances. In one message, he asked, Do we have the right datasets in there? Is there any reason you wanted to use but couldn't for some stupid reason? Of course, as that lawsuit goes on, I'm sure we will hear a lot more about that. Lastly today, flipping over to the startup side of the world, a big new round for AI avatar startup Synthesia, who has raised a fresh $180 million at a $2.1 billion valuation. That's about double their valuation from 18 months ago. AI avatars are, to me, one of the more interesting technologies in that I think that they are at once completely inevitable and yet will still take an artificially long time to become normalized, at least in the business world. There are a lot of great companies competing in this space, 
but Synthesia has a very big war chest now to compete. With that, though, we will wrap the headlines. Next up, the main episode. <laughs> 